Hall takes on ninth ranked Gonzaga. Well, the winner will advance to tomorrow night's championship game of the 22nd annual EA Sports Maui Invitational to meet the winner of the game. Still to come here tonight between Arizona and Connecticut. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Sean McDonough with Jay Billis and Bill Raftery. Delighted to have you with us for the third meeting ever between Michigan State and Gonzaga. Gonzaga victory yesterday over Maryland to get to the semifinals. They won 88-76 to over the Terrapins and looked good while doing it. I thought they looked like the most together team. They mm -hmm. shot 76% in the second half against Maryland. They forced 23 Maryland turnovers, and they've got an absolute star on the floor in Adam Morrison. They had three players score over 20 points in the win over Maryland. Meanwhile, while Michigan State struggled for a half against Chaminade, pulled away in the second half, 177 to 62. Bill, what's their key today? Well, for Tom, it was cloudy in Hawaii initially, but uh, no more allergic reaction. They've got to get back and be sound on the defensive end. Don't give up those easy opening shots. Some of the best teams in the country, some of the best players in the country as we look at Star Watch, brought to you by eBay. Maurice Ager, an outstanding athlete, terrific shooter, went four of five from three against Chaminade. He's got to shoot it well again today. And Jay Adam Morrison, imaginative, creative, great shot selection, good around the rim, good medium game, and can nail the deep one. For Michigan State, Drew Neitzel, the point guard with Ager, Shannon Brown, Drew Namick, and Paul Davis. And for Gonzaga, the outstanding point guard, Derek Rivio, with Pierre Marie Altador Cespedes. Adam Morrison, Sean Mallon, and J.P. Batista. Gonzaga is 2-0. They beat Idaho at home in Spokane before coming out here to Maui. Michigan State 1-1. One one. They played in Honolulu on Friday and lost to the Rainbows at the University of Hawaii. And the trip, the tip controlled by J.P. Batista for Gonzaga dressed in white. And Sean, Jay, Michigan State goes. Man, man. Maurice Sager guarding Adam Morrison. Batiste off to a great start this season, but not in this game as he gets called for a foul, trying to clear out some space inside. And Sean, it was interesting that Tom talking about Namick being not as physical as they would like because of the shoulder injury. Tom Izzo feeling that's a key, playing Baptiste tough down in the box. And Gonzaga starting out in man-to-man. -man. They played a 2-3 zone against Maryland. They'll have to play some zone today because Michigan State runs so many sets. Paul Davis the miss and Batista the rebound. Batista scored more than 20 points in each of their two games so far this year. Mallon a tough runner over Davis. Mallon got his own rebound. Rivio, an excellent shooter, and he rattles one in for the first bucket of the ball game. Quick he, feet. He's unorthodox quick. That's why he's hard to guard, in my opinion. He's a really good player. Good ball movement, and it's Ager for two out of the corner. Maurice Ager, senior from Detroit. Tom Izzo says he might be the best two guard that they've had at Michigan State during his tenure, and perhaps back even longer than that. They've had some outstanding players at that position. Well, you think, you're thinking of Rashford, I guess, and Steve Smith. Uh, the difficulty, I think, for Ager the first day, a little bit of a struggle, but one of the great wing performers. Mark Few in his seventh season as head coach at Gonzaga, winning as coach in the country right now by percentage at 81.3%. Been in the NCAA tournament all seven years with the Zags and should be again this year. Davis setting the little screen and then immediately ducking in and getting into Mallon. Mallon was on the high side, but you have got to keep him, Davis, from getting into you physically because he'll just steal you off inside. Mallon called for the foul, his first. 2 2 the score. All Davis, the senior, short with the shot. And a foul on the rebounding action against Maurice Ager. I like to see Davis looking for a shot, though. I think he can contribute facing the basket in low. Worked very hard offseason, I think. No, he's one of the most improved big guys over the course of his career in the country, and he's turned into a star. One of the things you don't want to see from Davis when he puts the ball on the floor, you don't want to see him fade away from the basket, go into the contact. Adam Morrison. Nice cut. He got it back from Batista, then gets stripped by Shannon Brown on the way up. 
Brown runs out with Neitzel, who lays it in. Boy, that was a great pass by Shannon Brown. He made the defense commit and then dumped it off to Neitzel. Outstanding. Now, all these teams have improved in a couple of days. They were messing up fast breaks earlier. Very sound look. And a three for Morrison. Good ball movement. And Eager trying to answer with a three. And the rebound down to Mallon, the junior from Spokane, Washington. Whoops. That looked like a travel. Yeah, sure was. Follow the rebounding action. Donnie Gray, Mike Stewart, Mike Pitts well, are the officials. And, and Sean, one of the great things about Morrison is his ability to extricate himself from traffic. Knows how to discard people, set them up, and he's got such a great stroke. And we saw yesterday his elevation. He can plumb bob on guards. Yeah, he's a good, good athlete. What he does, he goes slow to fast. That makes him really hard to guard. And I think he has got a shampoo commercial in his future sometime. <laughs> I hope so. I'll share my shampoo commercial <laughs> if you'd like. You can, you can share your hair dryer, too. Morrison, Ooh. another three that really wasn't a big part of his game last year, nor was it yesterday. Tom Izzo said eight of his ten field goals for Morrison as they watch the tape within a foot or two of the basket, like that one, which will count on a goal ten against Shannon Brown. I would have liked to have seen him give it up, though. Altidore Cespedes ahead, but once he did not, he did the right thing, taking it strong to the rim. Tom Izzo not really agreeing with that call, and that ball was going up. That's up a good block. Yeah. You just think so? I thought it was over the cylinder. If it rim. was over the cylinder, then it's a great call, but That's that was not up. coming down, I'll tell you that. No, I meant straight up over the cone once it's there. You would expect a high-scoring game. These two teams were both in the top 13 in the nation in scoring offense last year, both at more than 78 points per game. It's in the top 13 out of 326 Division I schools. And here's that 2-3 zone you alluded to, Jay. you got to be active and attack the shooters. Brown on the wing and Ager, of course. Name it, the follow. Rearrangement. Well, that's the hard part. When you go after a shot block and don't get it, you are leaving the offensive glass wide open. Namick took advantage of it. First bucket for Namick, who's off to a slow start this year as he recovers from shoulder surgery in the offseason. Really couldn't do anything for about four and a half months. And Tom Izzo told us before the game he's still working to get his strength back. Here's Davis down the lane for the dunk. How, how about Hager not panicking inside when he got stopped? And running the floor, the bigs, so essential. He's getting down the floor, getting the puppies down. If Namick gets in a wrestling match with J.P. Batista, Batista's going to win that one. Got to play him smart. Namick just picked up his second foul. Timeout. Great action early in Gonzaga to a two-point lead. Great athletes in this game. It's hard to find two wings more athletic than Shannon Brown and Maurice Hager. A the 2-3 look right now. They do a nice job going opposite from the box. There's Batista. Jeremy Pargo has come in for Gonzaga at guard number two. And Drew Namick is out with two fouls for Michigan State. Oran Sutan is in for him. Shannon Brown out of the corner for his first three points for the ball game. Now I, I go back into Batista again and see if Michigan State can stop him. Even when you are behind him and you think you have him stopped, he dislodges you. Now that's a foul. That should have been called. Well, there is a foul. They'll count the basket for J.P. Batista. And then they're going the other way. The foul is on Gonzaga. You've really got to hold your ground against Batista. Now, it, that may have been a little bit of a flop, but Batista really backs you up. He likes to back into you. It's almost a pro-style move. Now, the points of emphasis in the post say that's a foul. He's strong. He may have gotten away with a little bit, but a flop as well. The one thing Mark Few was concerned about were the wing people getting down the floor. Shannon Brown, that last trip for Michigan State, able to knock it down. They really stretched the D like this. Well, they just about had the slip inside to Davis. That's a good little set there. Shannon Brown has a three spin out. The last foul for Gonzaga after the Batista bucket was on David Pendergraft, who has just checked in for the Zags, wearing number 25. Morrison couldn't handle the pass. Brown and Ager. Oh! Is that unselfish? 
and attractive. Please. Well, you know what's great? In a two-on-one, they get to the rim. That ball never hit the floor. That was absolutely beautiful. All five players who started the game have scored for Michigan State. High low into Batista. And a nice job with the pump down. They've just got to face the ball. And of course, the pressure on the ball essential as well. Six points now for Batista, senior from Brazil in his second year at Gonzaga. Attended a couple of junior colleges before he went to Gonzaga. He was the West Coast Conference Newcomer of the Year last year. Long rebound out to Jeremy Pargo. Freshman off to Morrison. And look at Morrison run the floor. He started sprinting in anticipation before the ball was retrieved by Pargo. Well, he can smell the points oh, at the other can. end. Mark him down. He has 10 already. He's averaging 20 points and eight and a half rebounds in their two wins over Idaho and Maryland. Knights will lob in for Davis. Fouled before the shot. Morrison just takes off. Now he was a little bit ahead of everybody, but he accelerates and stand taken a little bit too early by Drew Neitzel, but in a two-on-one, awfully difficult to stop. Of course, the other break, I love this because they make this the guy defensively unsure of who's gonna have the ball. But just a great up. And then Pargo on the other end, Jay, made sure he didn't charge, slid by, dished with the left hand. A lot of guys run right over the defender. Morrison getting a rest, the foul on Pendergraft, his second. In the zone that was so effective for Gonzaga yesterday against Maryland, Sutan. And the rebound down to the red shirt freshman, Josh Heitbelt, who's been slowed in the early season by a foot injury. And that's put him behind a little bit, but a very talented young man. Radio. Ager, the hit ahead and a bad pass, intercepted by Pargo. Smart decision. Rivio will try again for two. He was on the line. That takes great when you have two point guards on the floor at the same time. Bad shot. And a three wouldn't go down for Travis Walton, the freshman. Come in at guard for the Spartans. Rivio up quickly. And there's Heidfeld too strong with that put back. He won't get an easier shot than that. Tom Izzo saying, hold off, wait. He wants his team to get a little bit of continuity, get some rhythm. They're shooting too quickly. Nice pass and cut. Gray brings a spark to the floor for Michigan State, this time by the pass. Jeremy Pargo coming down the floor. He just had not quite the numbers he needed. Pulls it back out. Good job by Travis Walton to stop his forward progress, but then seeing behind him Derek Rivio, that's really good basketball, Bill. And how about the guys at the rim, too, in case the miss is there? Shannon Brown at the line. The foul was on Pendergraft, and that's three. Brown made the first. One of the best free throw shooters in the Big Ten. Pendergraft goes out with his three fouls. Brown was 85% from the line last year, second best in the Big Ten. Junior from Maywood, Illinois, out of Proviso East High School. Same school that produced Dee Brown, the great star at the University of Illinois. And they played together, Team Brown. Can you imagine having to guard those three guys in high school? No. Uh, that particular pass, not a good one by Pargo. Some of the numbers in high school are incredible. Uh, 27 points, bunch of guys, and rebounds, 15, 16 rebounds. Of course, when you get to this next level, competition steps up. Six turnovers now for Gonzaga, leading by five, nearly eight minutes played. Oh, Here's semi final action. Beautiful pass. Walton into Shannon Brown. And a great screen by Goran Sutan. This, this Michigan State team does a great job of screening the zone. Just screened Heitfeld in the middle and took him out of the play. They built a nice job posting up. Morrison on fire here at the start of the game. Back in after a brief breather, and he has. 12 of their 22 points. His elevation's extraordinary. He gets five or six inches. He knows the guy can't block a shot. That time, Brown at the disadvantage. Five for five from the floor for Adam Morrison, the junior. And the Zags lead by five. 
Gonzaga leads by five, just under 12 minutes to go in the first half here at the EA Sports Maui Invitational. During the course of the season, the ESPN family of networks will showcase a great basketball moment from each of the 326 Division I schools. The countdown in alphabetical order from A to Z. Time now for ESPNU's pride of the program in the spotlight, Ball State. In a span of just 48 hours, Ball State's ankle-breaking ball handling drove the Cardinals past Roy Williams' number three, Kansas Jayhawks. And then the Cardinals powered their way inside to defeat fourth-ranked UCLA at the 2001 Maui Invitational as Ball State catapulted its way to a top 15 ranking of its own. Steve Lava there. Of course, uh, that was one of the first times I think a coach was wired. Tim Buckley was wired in that particular game. Tom Izzo started his career here at the EA Sports Maui Invitational, his head coaching career when he took over for Judd Heathcote. These two have a lot in common. Mark Pugh was a 10-year assistant at Gonzaga before he was elevated to head coach. And Dan Munson left to go to Minnesota. Here's a longtime assistant to Judd Heathcote, who is here watching the game this afternoon in Maui. Paul Davis drops it in, and the Spartans are within three. Too easy just to crush Keenan and slide to the goal. They got to do a better job defensively. Morrison finally misses. Davis a good rebound in traffic, and Neitzel has them quickly into the forecourt. Walton fouled, and he'll go to shoot a pair. Well, it has to be mixed emotions for Judd Heathcote, longtime Michigan State coach, 340 wins at Michigan State, the national championship in 1979. But when he retired, he and wife Beverly moved to Spokane. They're Gonzaga season ticket holders, and Judd has lunch with Mark Few and his assistants almost every Tuesday in Spokane. Yeah, they call it Tuesdays with Judd, and Judd is the uh, not so sympathetic ear for Mark Few, but he's also given Mark a lot of advice, as he has Tom over the years. And Judd Heathcote was a, a terrific coach and raised a lot of outstanding head coaches through his stable. They go to Jack and Dan's in Spokane. Not a bad spot. John Stockton's dad. Uh, but I would not want to be the loser of this game and have to listen to Judd Monin. Well, Tom Izzo was telling us when they got over here Saturday night after that difficult loss to Hawaii over in Honolulu, his team was having meetings and watching films, and Judd Heathcote waited for about an hour and a half outside the Michigan State meeting room to talk to Tom Izzo about what had transpired over in Honolulu. Well, just so you know, Judd's the type of guy, Tom told me this one time, he came into practice, and. Afterwards, Tom asked him, what'd you think, Judd? And he said, love your players, hate your team. Let's <laughs> <laughs> say hate your coach. You know, <laughs> which should have been a little harsh. His critique of the Hawaii game was drink water. What a job Tom Izzo has done since taking over. And his mentor, 11 years. The head coach, an NCAA title for Izzo, four regular season Big Ten titles, two Big Ten tournament titles, four Final Four appearances in the last seven years. They've been in eight straight NCAA tournaments. That's the longest current streak in the Big Ten. Gonzaga picking up right where it left off in the second half against Maryland, and the beat goes on as Jeremy Pargo hits a long three. It's amazing the feel he has. He backed the ball off earlier. This time backs his feet up and knocks a three down. Neitzel shuffled his feet just a tad and got away with it. Missed the shot. Here's Pargo, the freshman from Chicago, the brother of the Chicago Bulls, Janeiro Pargo. And Gonzaga gets the ball out quickly off a miss, and they also inbound it quickly after a make. Puts a lot of pressure on your transition defense. Pargo missed a runner. Tom Izzo is familiar with him. He Spent some time watching Fargo as a recruit in Chicago. Marquise Gray never did get it up on the rim. Here they go again, right on QJ, getting it out quickly. Morris into Fargo. He's got it all, doesn't he? He sure does. He knows when to dive. Nice trail play. Fargo, incidentally, has not made a mistake yet. He's fan dribbled when there's nothing there. The numbers aren't in his favor. Made great decisions. Even that look to Morrison. 
Second foul on Maurice Ager. Define fan dribble for those who don't know what you mean. Bring it to the side, let the traffic subside. Angle out. Well, Morrison just knows how to play. He's one of those guys that plays with great pace, sets you up. Not sure the Sox are ever going to make a comeback, but. <laughs> He can look any way he wants when you exactly. play that well. Exactly. You used to wear those in high school, didn't you? You wore them on the beach today. I used to wear them when I played baseball. They look good with your sandals, though. Boron Sutan back in. Morrison has battled childhood diabetes, diagnosed at age 12. His dad, John, has organized horse tournaments in Spokane the last couple of years to raise money for the American Diabetes Association. Nice dish. Knights will put it in the corner for Ager. Good position by Sutan. And a new shot clock for the Spartans, down by six, midway through the half, a runner by Eager. How about that for mentioning your game up? You don't make the jumper, and this kid can blow by and get to the 10. The explosion, and a great job by Paul Davis to seal it inside, try to get position. Eager has six. Michigan State called for a foul that Tom Izzo didn't like. And it's the third on Maurice Eager. And to guard Morrison, looked like they called a little hold on him as Morrison was trying to come off a screen. And that's the, that's how valuable Morrison is with that change of pace that he uses. Got a guard him. Three rattled out. Shannon Brown to pull up. That's for two. He really, really worked on that shot. He's become a really good shooter from the perimeter. Can pull up and pull the trigger from three. Well, that's what I think makes them tough. The wing guys can shoot it, then they can explode to the rim. Brown, after having those debilitating cramps in Honolulu against Hawaii Saturday that forced him to be taken off the court on a stretcher after a lengthy delay, hasn't shown any after effects here in Maui. 18 against Chaminade and nine already against Gonzaga. Here come the Zags again, led by Radio. Spartan fans wanted to foul at the other end. Mallon to Morrison with Batista and Pargo. The nice. five some on the court for the Zags. Good defense by Davis. Brown couldn't handle it. Sutan got it back. It's sloppy. That looked like a travel. Sutan rebound Walton, and he's fouled by Mallon. A great hustle by Michigan State. It might not have looked pretty, but Goran Sutan did a great job of not giving up on that play. Because he ran, he was able to corral that ball after Brown saved it. And Brown with a great effort as well in that particular play. Both teams like to get up and down. I think it's judgment at the end of breaks when the numbers are even. Two fouls on Mallon. He's gone to the Gonzaga bench. Seven team fouls. So the Zags are over the limit. There's Travis Walton, freshman from Lima, Ohio. Lima Senior High School. He averaged 20 points per game, but he's better known early in his collegiate career for his defense. Tom Izzo says he's the most tenacious defender they've ever had. And they've had some guys who like to guard. Well, he doesn't give any ground. And that's what great defenders do. He gets up into your face and he will not give an inch. And he plays with a lot of passion. A lot of guys say they play with emotion. I don't think emotion can be sustained, but passion can, and Walton plays with it. Back to a one-point game, eight minutes to go, first half. Sean McDonough with Bill Raftery and Jay Billis at the EA Sports Maui Invitational. A running floater by Adam Morrison. He has 15 in the first 12 minutes plus. Big guy's got to step up, don't they, Bill, and well, take that curl away? He's so tough that when you do come up, he had options there, too, defensively on the offensive end. Davis struggled with the pass, never did have it in his grasp, and Batista knocked it away to Rivo. Fourth turnover for Michigan State. Nathan Dowdney of transfer from Texas Tech. He's had 
knee problems. You can see the brace on his left leg. And a long jumper by Josh Heitfeld, the 6'11 freshman with his first bucket. And so he can rebound, too. He's going to be a nice-looking player. Highly recruited player. Sutan missed. Here come the Zags quickly again. Heitfeld traveled. Eight turnovers for Gonzaga, but Morrison has been brilliant, pacing the Zags to a five-point lead. And I felt good defense to knock it out. And Iowa's got a really good team because they've got older players, having guys like Greg Bruner and Jeff Horner. How about Hanson, too? He's got, like, if he stays in the game, I mean, they don't have a whole lot of size, but... He's a big-time shot blocker. Uh, Holeska, another guy. Adam Holeska, really, that's right. He can really knock some shots down. Heitzel off for Davis down the lane to dunk it over Heitfeld. Nice timing on that play, though. Heitzel being creative and a good dive to the tin, but a big guy. Well, he really goes so much stronger to the basket than he used to. He's matured into a great college basketball player. All away from the ball on Warren Sutton of Michigan State, his first. 16 foul, so not yet the limit. Davis out top, you can see nice shot fake and dribble by hard to the pin. He became the third leading rebounder in the Big Ten last year, and that was a big jump for him. Really he became a dominant big guy. Brown in transition. Suits on the rebound, then lost it out of bounds. Uh, Gonzaga's done a nice job getting back and playing the wing people. Uh, but most importantly, I think Davis, which is overlooked here, he's been bouncing Baptista away from the box, which he dominated last year. He can't get touches, not able to dominate. Let's see if they go back to Batista and challenge Davis. Oh, Cargo got to the rim, a little 360 spin, and Malay in. How about that for being creative? to shoot for the Spartans and Walton will settle. He's out there with Neitzel Brown, Sutton and Davis for Michigan State. Uh, nice recovery that trip on a rotation. They trapped the box and got back in space. Six to shoot. Neitzel. Nicely done. He only averaged three and a half shot attempts per game last year and he's been a more frequent shooter in the early season so far this year. Well, he's done a nice job with his shot fakes. Rivio has over-pursued on his closeouts, and Neitzel's taken advantage of it. Neitzel has four points, averaged three and a half points per game last year. Oh, yeah, come. Make yourself available. Heitfeld knows how to play, Jay. He has four for the level of play in all the games we've seen so far today. Several notches up from yesterday. It seemed like the teams yesterday a little bit anxious. So much hype about this tournament, the quality of the field and the opponents. And they're all settling in, it appears, today. Morrison a rebound in traffic. First couple of games were tough, though, Sean, on kids. You know, just coming out of five and a half, six weeks of practice. A talented field. So eager to get started with the season. So much anticipation for the start of the year for all of these teams. Batista and Sutton are getting in a little brawl down there. I tell you, I love the interior defense. They got a three-second violation on Baptista because of that. Great leg work, position, and strength. Gonzaga has turned it over nine times. They are fun to watch for the wide open style. And some flair. They lead by six. The teams that today are living up to the preseason expectations and the rankings. They are good-looking teams that are clearly very well coached. And you know, your point of teams getting better here is very true. I mean, they're getting their legs underneath them. They're solid. They've got all answers. I think the one area for Tom, just being solid, low post action, reversing the basketball. They haven't been able to get their fast breaks, but they've run their half-court stuff beautifully. They have run their offense very well. They've got to get some production out of the four spot. Marquise Frey is showing some signs of being a really good player for them. He's so active and bouncy. 
Takes the double as if quickly they can reverse it. They did, but Gonzaga did a nice job responding quickly. Davis, line drive jumper wouldn't go, and the rebound down to Sean Mallon, his fourth. He's averaging six points and six rebounds a game in their first two this season. That's an awfully difficult shot for Paul Davis, that turnaround jumper over that left shoulder. That's difficult. Yeah, nice play now. Get, taking advantage of size here. Morrison shot over the shorter Brown. Was long with it. And then Brown in oh. transition. Wow. How quick. With some strength. Send it in. Ooh. 13 for Shannon Brown. Five of nine shooting. And an offensive foul called against Gonzaga. You think this is some incentive to get back in transition? Oh. Shannon Brown. Is that soaring with the best of them? What a throwdown. Oh. You've got to get back and make them fan out. That's one of the things that Mark Few was concerned about. Last foul is on Mamory Diallo, who just came in for Gonzaga, his first. Davis was surrounded. Again, they reverse it. And Shannon Brown is now leading all scores for all the attention on Morrison. Suddenly, it's Brown with a game-high 16 points. That was a nice adjustment by Tom Izzo to put Brown opposite of Paul Davis. So when the ball is reversed out of the double team, he's got a shooter over there. And mm -hmm. Diallo shows a air ball after picking up the foul a moment ago. He's had a tough stint since entering the game. They do a nice job, too, of overloading, uh, making sure on the ball reversal they get a short corner, makes one guy guard two. But these two wing guys are as good as you can get. Uh, when you see Ager and Brown at their best, ooh, are they incredibly quick and tough. Now the pin downs. Oh, nice read by Knightsa. And also from the top, no, no hands up, no deterrent from Brown. He's showing you the whole package. Knightsa's bucket gives Michigan State the lead for the first time since it was 2-0. Michigan State runs a lot of great sets. Let's take a look at one of them, a set play call. It's a box set for Michigan State. They call it Zipper. And there'll be a dribble entry to the right. Shannon Brown is going to back screen Drew Namick into the post and then pop out for ball reversal. After that screen is set, Namick goes into the post. There he pops out. And then he's going to reverse the ball to the other side. Paul Davis sets a down screen for Maurice Ager, who comes off shooting. And whether it's Ager or Brown, this team runs a ton of sets. They're very hard to prepare for. They've got 60, 65 plays in their playbook. And if you're the opposing coach, that gives you nightmares. That's why you play a lot of zone against them, so you don't have to guard all that. Uh, the tough thing you say to prepare for, but basically a lot of them are the pin down series at the end of it. And they're very good at slipping to the goal, of course, getting their back to the basket. But individual talent prevailing here as Brown. This is as good as I've seen him play, Jay. Well, and that was just a fabulous pass, but an even better read by Drew Neitzel. He was supposed to, by design, come out off that down screen, but he saw his guy was cheating out, and then he just went back door on. That was beautiful. Can I ask a very important question? Yes. What are you talking about? <laughs> you know, in the video game, did they get a technical for Sparty to Spartan there being on the court and jumping up and down they right after? During game action, you're yeah, right. Yeah, during game action. That should be a technical. But the first time Baptista has gotten the ball, I think he was surprised where he could dominate. And he can't let him prevail down there. Well, he's... Matter of fact, there are guys that are bumping him now, but look how he just knocks you off your path. He's just in there too long. And I felt called for the travel. Turnovers have been an issue so far this season for both teams. Tom Izzo was talking about how many turnovers there have been for all the teams, but each of these teams so far has averaged more than 17 turnovers per game. Now, the word that Mark Few talked about, about Michigan State whenever they play them, toughness. You've got to match them toughness, and they have been banging the big guys inside. That's gotten them in the game. Everything's been on the perimeter. Well, I agree. You want to match their toughness, but you don't want to get into a physical fight with them. I mean, the thing that Gonzaga does better than most other teams is they're very, very skilled. So they've got to be tough in running their cuts, 
but they don't want to get into a slug it out fight with Michigan State because that's that's what the Spartans do. And the big thing with Baptista getting to the foul line, he hasn't been able to do that. Shot clock at 10. And toughness for the Spartans, a reflection of their head coach, Tom Izzo. Walton, a runner. Davis, a tip. Alex Murray, tough to control if you don't put a body on him. Time for the Zags to get one off. And the three would not go for Cargo. There was a travel call anyway, and it would not count. Great performance by Shannon Brown. He had 18 against Chaminade yesterday. He's nearly matched that in the first half today. Another beautiful day in Maui. More than 2 million visitors come to this paradise every year. We're happy to be three of them. Sean McDonough, Jay Billis, and Bill Rafty. A very entertaining first half. Gonzaga had it going their way for much of the half. Scoreless over the last four minutes. And they certainly can't forget about Adam Morrison. He didn't score over the last mm -hmm. seven minutes of the first half, but they've got to spread the wealth a little bit, and they cannot afford Bill to turn the ball over. They had 12 turnovers in that first half. How about Michigan State defensively, though? They've been tough. I think the big area of concern is Gonzaga getting down the floor and addressing the wing people so they can't get their early entry offense going. Gonzaga shot 50%. For the half, the turnovers hurt them. And that's nothing new. Last year, they shot 50% from the floor for the season. The Zags were fourth in the nation in field goal percentage. Maurice Hager sat out much of the first half with three fouls. Missed his first shot of this half from in close. They were posting him and going right after Adam Morrison. No signal yet. And the ball will... Stay with Michigan State with 18 seconds on the shot clock. You have to watch Shannon Brown on this play. They like to set a screen for him and put him into the lane after this. Now they got an offensive foul on the pick. Let me ask you something, we are not being smart, but when you were doubled, what were some of the things that you were taught? If, if you got, here's the double screen, they got. Just leaning uh, into it, it too yeah. much. What were some of the things that you were taught? First, Drag dribble. First look opposite and then dribble out and try to get it to where you can reverse the ball. Uh, the point being, Davis did not do that. I thought he should have taken it and bounced out, opening up the lane a little bit. Batista shoots over Drew Namick, who corrals the rebound. Namick just picked up his third foul. Ager playing with three. Drove on Rivio and gets credit for the basket. See, that's the major issue, though. You've got to get down. That's the early offense. You've got to get back and get in a denied position. This cross-court pass is just gorgeous by Neitzel. The drop step and the finish. Extraordinary. Well, Rivio caught with nothing to do. He tried to get in and take a charge, but Ager was able to slip past it, and Batista did not do a good job of getting back to try to stop that. Nine points now for Ager. He played just nine minutes in the first half because of foul trouble. The longer we go into this tournament, the more we keep an eye out for signs of fatigue. Second game in as many days for these two teams. And for Michigan State, third game in four days. They played Saturday in Honolulu. Davis the rebound, and then he was fouled. And you mentioned last night, Tom Izzo said if he had it to do over again, he would not have scheduled that game with the University of Hawaii. Obviously, they lost, but he didn't know they were going to draw them uh, Chaminade as their first game here. And if he did, he might not have felt the need to play a game for a little preparation before he came to Maui. Uh, his team's gotten better by virtue, I think, of the Hawaii game. Paying more attention. Good second half against Chaminade. Nice kick to Neitzel. Missed the three. Well, the negative now is they're going to play four games in five days. It's already tough enough to play three games in three days here, but the addition of the game Saturday in Honolulu makes it four and five for Michigan State. Well, Mark Hughes done a great job getting Baptista touches in the box, and then they get Marson on track. And that's four on Ager. How tough is he with the hesitation? He's got a myriad of deliveries, and as he gets to the base on this little hesitation, now that's look pro kind of move. Get him up, body search and the ability to knock it down as well. And you go for that fake because it's got such credibility. I mean, you know that Morrison can hit that shot right in your grill, so you're gonna go for that fake, but that's where as a defender, especially with three fouls, you've gotta be more disciplined. You can't leave your feet when somebody raises their eyebrows. And Zaga had gone more than five and a half minutes without a point. 
And Morrison had gone more than nine minutes without scoring. He has 18 now. Eager on the bench with his four fouls. And now Gonzaga can afford to pack it in a little bit. Really only Namick and Brown are going to hurt you from the perimeter. And get that zone going again. And Knights on Brown, excuse me. Travis Walton to Drew Neitzel and now Shannon Brown. And Michigan State trailed by as many as seven in the first half. Rally to take the lead at halftime. Now it's Gonzaga down by three. Morrison fouled on the floor by Shannon Brown. Boy, under great control. Wasn't it that little spin He's move, but didn't get out of control and was still able to get the defender off his feet. You know what's overlooked? His ability to bounce the ball, yep. too. I mean, he's got a little guy here. Now, usually this is a charge, but how about this? Poise, take the hit. Looking to get to the free throw line, but that's just great individual ability. He didn't shoot that, by the way. No, no. It was he was in the good. act, but didn't continue it. They changed the foul to Travis Walton. Would have been just the first on Shannon Brown. And Mark Few arguing with Mike Kitts that the foul should have been on Shannon Brown and not Travis Walton. I think the officials are going to confer about this. It certainly looked like Shannon Brown. Well, Walton, I didn't even think Walton was in the area. Now they're checking now. I think they're... Hey, the elevation, that was Brown. Like, what? <laughs> no disrespect to Walton, but he didn't get up that high. That was Brown. And this is one of the instances you can go to the monitor to make sure you correctly identified the player to whom the foul should be given. I think after Mike Kitts sees what we just saw, the foul will be charged to Brown. See, Walton is behind him. I think the He's three the Cespedes behind him. So it was Brown. There's no question about it. I think the three and the five got the referees confused a little bit. Uh, pretty sharp on the bench there, Gonzaga. And Mike Kitts, one of the best officials in the country, for three final fours, corrects the error. That's usually a temporary comment by our colleague. <laughs> <laughs> it's game to game with uh, Mr. McDonough. Boy, and, uh, Quite a nice thing to say about Mike after he threw out Jim Beheim from an <laughs> exhibition game. That must have stung me a little bit. Was that Mike? Yeah. Well, never mind. I take it all back. <laughs> <laughs> no respect for the coach of the Harvard of Central New York, as we like to call Syracuse University. Well, 2-2-1. Two, two, Broken very effectively. Uh, is that making them pay for the pressure? They broke it to score. Oh, exactly. Attack, attack. Let's face it, we're all blind to the cars. J.P. Batista called for the foul. And then Goran Sutan will go to the line. Three fouls on Batista. He's from Brazil. Sutan, born in Bosnia, grew up outside Sarajevo, was a member of the national team at age 14. Shortly so thereafter, he came to this country, to Lansing, Michigan, played high school at Everett High School, the same High school that sent Magic Johnson on to Michigan State in a national championship with the Spartans. A lot of skills. Sutan, good shooter, ball handler, and passer at 6'10. Reminds you a little bit of a Rasm Lorbeck who they had at Michigan State a few years ago. Another one that shouldn't have left that early, right? No question. John Mallon, Adam Morrison. It rattles out, good position inside by Mallon. A held ball with Paul Davis. And the Zags will play it in, down by three. 17-25 remaining. Now Morrison really gets free. I mean, Brown was on him, just a little step to the baseline. Pops, and he's got six, eight inches on that jump shot. Got a great look. And his footwork is so good. He's ready to shoot when the ball arrives. Does his work early. Nice overload. <laughs> And Rivio with three out of the corner. Nice hands by Morrison. Oh. the back to him. Eichfeld missed the dunk. After Altador Cespedes has set him up beautifully. And at the other end, Brown threw it away with a tough attempt to get it to Davis. Looked like it was tipped. It was tipped. You are seeing some great individual plays. Now, this one should go down. Uh, that's a nice little dump back by Cespedes, as you noted. How about the defensive play by Mars and set it up? Deflection and kicked it back in. Yeah. 
Tied at 45. 17 minutes to go. Michigan State and Gonzaga. A little overzealous by Cespedes there. They do a nice job, Jay, of getting the high-low set up on an overload and then ball reversal and sprinting towards it in the low post area. And one thing Michigan State's always been really good at is screening the zone. They run sets against it. There's a screen right there to free up Shannon Brown. That's his shot. Well done. Screener steps to the ball. I mean, it's old school, but it works. Ten points for Paul Davis. He's now been in double figures in scoring in all three Spartan games this year. Morrison down low. Good defense by Brown. He wound up with a rebound. Three on two. Fast break. Awkward looking dribble. It had the Gonzaga fans looking for a violation. And Will Morrison's looking for a walk because he caught his own shot. Marquise Gray will return for Michigan State. The redshirt freshman from Flint. Mark Hughes is going to bring Jeremy Cargo back onto the court. And off the door, Cespedes will go out. He's from Montreal, is Pierre. From Champlain San Lambert High School, the same high school that produced. Maurice Joseph, the Michigan State freshman. They were teammates in high school. That school has had nine players on the Division I basketball in this country in the last five years. Despite the disparaging comments made by some about the quality of basketball in Canada. I was joking. I was joking. Let's not start an international incident. We don't want to be invaded by Canada. You're the one who started it last night. We're trying to bail you out. It has come a long <laughs> way since Jack Dunham, who started that program up there many years ago. You can stay at my house. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Drew Neitzel. And that's a goal, oh, Ken. Yeah, good reaction by the big guy, though. And Neitzel doing the right thing. Found that hole and took it to the 10. Timeout at the EA Sports Maui Invitational. The Spartans up by four. Nick Gonzaga, the EA Sports Maui Invitational. And Gonzaga runs a lot of great sets, especially for Adam Morrison. They like a quick hitter called Turnout. It's a box set. They get into a, this box, and then on one side, the right side, you'll get a down street, a pin down, and then the big man fades to the corner. Once they hit the wing, on the opposite side, you'll get a pin down for Adam Morrison, a quick little down screen that he curls. And when he curls that screen, he is a very good finisher, has all of the skills. And EA Sports, we're very pleased that we could partner up with them. They could show you a little bit on video what Adam Morrison likes to do on, on what has to be EA's equivalent of the Billustrator, right? And it's in the game. And through that- The Billustrator. Sean, you don't look moved by it. Did, well, did you get uh, compensated for the Billustrator or yeah, is it just a verbal a, they gave me pat on the back? <laughs> no, they gave me a free sandwich. It wasn't the shirt, I don't think. <laughs> Incidentally, Morrison- I'm just overwhelmed by Jay's humility. Can the game capture <laughs> that? <laughs> Morrison with Gonzaga down by four. More than four minutes played here in the second half. Rivio with Neitzel up on him. Rivio Cargo, Morrison, Heitfeld, and Pendergraf. Oh, oh. He's he just amazing. He did the staggered double for him. And now beating his guy. He wanted the jump shot. They take that away. He knows footwork beautifully. And again, Jay, the ability to dribble. Here he comes around the stagger. Now watch the footwork on this dribble. Spins back. That's beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? That, that is, is big time. Two fouls on Shannon Brown. There seems to be some confusion again. Mike Stewart, one of the officials over at the scorer's table. <laughs> Any guess as to what this is about, fellas? Not, not really. 
Right, Kitts is going to go over there now as well. I think there's a question about the score. Scoreboard has it 52-47. We have it as 49-47. Well, Swanee hasn't been right in years. Mike Swanson are crack numbers, man. The, the score is not right up on the scoreboard. On the arena scoreboard, it is correct on our scoreboard. Did they not put up the last deuce, maybe? Is that what the discussion might be? Well, there was an extra three up there for Michigan State. Maybe Judd was working the scoreboard. Mm -hmm. You've heard Judd speak. I mean, he does get away with things when he's at the podium. That Judd, most normal human Judd people. Heathcote is a brilliant dinner speaker. Adam Morrison finishes the three-point play. There's the longtime Michigan State coach, now Spokane, Washington resident and Gonzaga season ticket holder. The conflicted today, Judd Heathcote, although he is wearing a Michigan State golf shirt. I think his justification is Michigan State paid him and he's paying Gonzaga. Neitzel missed a three, now a chance for the lead for Gonzaga, led by seven at 20 to 13, the largest lead for either team. That was in the first half. Here's Pendergraf averaging nearly a foul per minute in the tournament. Pendergraf fouled out in eight minutes yesterday with three fouls in three minutes in the first half today. Gonzaga back up 12 points for Rivio. Well, he's a gamer, Rivio. Father was a terrific player. With the two point guard mentality, they are extremely tough along with Morrison. We have a lot of skilled handlers on the floor, Morrison included. Sutan picked it out. Shannon Brown, a long three. And just joining us, Michigan State playing without Maurice Zager on the bench with four fouls. He played just nine minutes in the first half, collected three fouls and sat out the rest of the half. Don Nelson would love coaching Mars in that point forward mentality. Rivio, right another deep three. Get up and get a hand on him. Boy, he gets it up so quickly though. That's how his unorthodox quickness really can fool you. A scrum, a held ball, and it'll go back to Gonzaga. Derek Rivio is a competitor. And sets his feet, gets it up quickly. He had a terrific ball game in the opener. 24 points, ran the team extremely well. He's got an, a speed to his game that's really remarkable. And you know what's remarkable also? Morrison's ability to attract people to him. He dragged his defender and Rivio, who's got a lot of intestinal fortitude and quick feet, rises to the occasion. Eight straight points for Gonzaga. Got the range. Morrison, an air ball. He had to bounce back after a little brush from Shannon Brown. Here come the Spartans. A little stagnant on offense, but their best offensive player, Ager, on the bench. Knights over Walton. Brown inside of Davis. They're out there with Gray, and Davis is fouled. It'll be a shooting foul. Heitbelt called for the foul, his first. Uh, Tom Izzo just called Gray over Jay. He forgot to overload against the zone. He was not in position, so uh, they're very fortunate to get to the free throw line. One of the questions at the start of this year for Michigan State, power forward. It looks like they'll do it by committee. Among the many candidates, Tom Izzo says that Marquise Gray is the best athlete by far. Here comes Ager back in. Tom Izzo with confidence in the veteran. He can play a while without picking up that fifth foul. He comes back in with 13, 11 remaining. And his team now down by two. 
Now, you don't want to wait too long to bring Ager back in. You don't want him getting stale over there on the bench. I've got to get something out of him. Whistle and a foul away from the ball. Maurice Hager got off to a very good start for Michigan State, but foul trouble has gotten to him. A little cheap one trying to guard Morrison, leaving his feet on a head and shoulder fake and picking up his fourth. So he's got to be careful. You don't want to take away your aggressiveness, but you want to pick your spot. Last fouls on Travis Walton, his first, the fifth on the Spartans. Morrison, a long three. Shooting a lot of threes during the early season. Last year, that was not a big part of his game. As a matter of fact, in the first two years of his career, he had shot just 31% from beyond the arc. A lot of the zone, too. Part of the factor, him stepping out. There's a chance for the tie or a lead with a three ball for Michigan State. We go under 13 minutes remaining. At the EA Sports Maui Invitational Semifinals, the winner will play in the championship game tomorrow against the winner of the game coming up next between Arizona and Connecticut. Uh, making yourself available. Davis did a great job sprinting there. A little hesitation, got himself to the rim. Now Shannon Brown started in the middle, and when the ball moved to one side, that opened up that middle, and Davis very alertly got in there. Nice screen by Brown. Last foul on Heidfeld, his second. He's gone to the bench. 16 fouls on Gonzaga, so they're one from the limit. Goody ball into a foul shooting contest. Ager trying to warm back up after the long stint on the bench. Missed the three. Argo to Rivio with Pendergraft, Batista, and Morrison for the Zags. A long three wouldn't go for Fargo. They need to go inside. Get the ball into Batista and see if he can do something out of it. What a play by Rivio. Ooh, they what? Oh, they get the foul. It looked like he had a steal, and then he was fouled by Walton. But Donnie Gray didn't see it that way. Wow. Great anticipation. Great play. Right in front of him. Watch this now. There's the steal, and that's, now the hold. That's called a steal. Mm. That's called a bad call. You're right, yeah. Derek. Chris did some job at the end of that Texas game, right? Takes the field goal he and then blocks such, the shot. Such an improved player, LaMarcus Aldridge. Daniel Gibson may be the best point guard in America. Yeah, a lot of threes by Daniel last night as Fargo gets to Nickel Dimer. Rabio batted the ball away. That's his third foul. I'm not sure he should have had either of the last two. Well, that's a, that's a lot. Close. Wow, he's had two tough ones, right? Yeah. Hand is supposed to be a part of the ball. Yeah, that's two fouls in a row he's been called for, and neither one of them at did least he actually that, commit. At least that one looked more like a foul. The first one I didn't think looked like a foul at all. The one where he jumped yeah. in front. I didn't think that one did either. Live, but it was again right in front of us. Curious to see what Michigan State will run against the zone because they've been ineffective of late. They're not reversing the ball. Don't have the ring shooters at times. And, on the, on the floor, but they do this trip. They're most effective when they get somebody flashing into the middle of it, like when they got Davis off that one set. Nice cut. Oh, boy. Batista scores over the shorter Shannon Brown. 12 for JT Batista. And Zaga by four, nine minutes to go. The winner will play Arizona or Connecticut in tomorrow's championship game. Wildcats and Huskies in the building, standing by to play the final game of the day here. Davis fouled by Batista. Davis is one rebound away from another double-double. He's had a double-double in each of their first two games of this season. And in 10 of the last 17 games, dating back to the end of last season, that's four fouls now on J.P. Batista. Yeah, that's the best offensive trip they've had. Michigan State, good ball move. They end up with this jump shot. Batista attacking, but they reverse the ball, put it on the deck, cross court. And one thing about Michigan State, they are a very good free throw shooting team. Yes. Ager and Brown are over 80%. Davis, a very good free throw shooting big guy. Rude Olsen looking on. He and the Wildcats getting ready to play Connecticut. Michigan State last year was 78% from the line as a team, third in the nation. 
I mean, Arizona taking a look at Lute Olsen coming up in the next game. Was not particularly worried about his team after they shot 28% yesterday. He said he knows they're not going to shoot 28% again. He thought Hassan Adams settled for too many deep shots and didn't play his game. Morrison. Tough shot. Too tough. Heidfeld kept it alive. Neitzel and Malin a held ball. Donnie Gray doing the limbo over on the bench there. <laughs> Managed to stay upright and make the call. Held ball. And the ball goes to Michigan State with a chance to tie it or take the lead with a three. Uh, he wasn't too limber in his limbo on this particular play. Good hustle play. Neitzel thinking he got attacked over the top. Good hustle by both guys. Neitzel wondering if he got the first down. Drew had eight assists in their win yesterday over Chaminade. That was a career high for the sophomore from Grand Rapids. Nearing the eight minute mark. Eager for the lead. He's been short on his last three. Follow the rebounding action. Hey, Valt, I think underneath Sean, nice job on a big guy shooting coming in. The 10th team foul, so Michigan State will shoot two the rest of the way. The third personal and Josh Heitbelt. And that's the problem with taking Jade P. Batista out of the ball game. You lose some experience and some bulk. What a good day from the line for Michigan State. They are now 16 out of 18 as a team from the line. Sutan makes a pair, and we're tied at 59 with 8.03 remaining. Travis Walton returns, and Neitzel goes out to a hand from the Michigan State fans. And part of Michigan State is the ability to rebound and play tough. That's why they get to the foul line. Pargo to Morrison with a right EO, Mallon and Heidbelt. Pargo should drive him. Put it on the deck and test him out. Rovers played six minutes, nearly six minutes now with the four fouls. Nice shot for Heitfeld. That's all because of Morrison's threat. They hedged out and then the slip to the tip. Good job by Heitfeld. That lob a little low from Cargo. He had to go down and catch it, bring it up quickly to score. Walton to Ager. Sutan, Davis, and Brown, the rest of the fivesome for the Spartans. Ager for the lead, got that one up and over the rim. And Michigan State by one, 12 points for Maurice Ager. A really good ball movement, and Ager stepped into that one. His last three were short. That one he stepped into, and it was right on the money. A lot of patience that trip by Michigan State. Look at the movement that Gonzaga has in that motion offense. And Morrison's a guy that really keeps everybody active. Their eyes on a tough shot. Huh? How about the confidence of the big guy? Heitfeld. Josh Heitfeld, a three. Good perimeter shooter at six foot 11. Ager again, short that time. Davis bumped on the follow. And he'll go back to the line with a chance to tie it. Ager off the catch and shoot did a great job of stepping into it. That's what elevated him. That's what knocked it down. Back on Maui, the EA Sports Maui Invitational and a dandy that looks like it's heading down to the wire. Gonzaga leads by two. Right here after Paul Davis makes this pass. Jeremy Pargo is supposed to pick that man up on the wing and bump off Adam Morrison. And Morrison telling the freshman right there, you got to get over there. That's why we picked up a foul there, because I wasn't getting, able to get that down and box out. As a result, Heitfeld picked up a foul his fourth. Morrison's going to get a little breather here with six and a half to go. And Paul Davis at the line with 16 points and 10 rebounds. He's 6 for 6 from the free throw line. Third straight double double to open this season. And 11th in the last 18 games. One of the best performances of his career in that Sweet 16 win over Duke. 
when he had 20 points and 12 rebounds. Locking horns much of the day with the great Sheldon Williams. Also had 15 rebounds in the final four head to head with Sean May. Seemed to live up to so much of the talk we've heard for so long about Paul Davis at the end of last year really became the player that many expect him to be before. I think he's playing a lot more confident. I think he's gonna have a great year. Well, he's, been, he's been really good before that. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, people expect so much and he's had a natural progression for a great college player. I remember two years ago when we were at Michigan State, they were talking about would his sophomore year be his last? Would he come out in the NBA draft? And he has a good sense of humor about it. He said before the season this year, I'm definitely going to enter the NBA draft at the end of this year. He's a senior. Sultan. And that was all Davis defensively. Turned, faced the man, caught the ball, started the outlet. Six minutes to go in a tie game. Brown with Walton Ager. Davis and Sutan for Tom Izzo. Heitfeld runs out to block Brown's shot, and Pargo corrals it for Gonzaga with Ribio, Mallon, and Pendergraf. Ribio kept alive by Pendergraf, but into the hands of Davis for his 11th rebound. Going to the well a little too deep, I think, for Ribio. Well, it's a quick shot. They didn't make Michigan State really guard him. One thing that Gonzaga has had a little bit of a weakness. They take some quick shots. Nice pin down. And Brown missed the three. The rebound for Ager and a new shot clock for the Spartans. Heads up, shot! Their wings can rebound. They can soar. Mark Few has J.P. Batista going to the able to check in. Brown missed the three. Mallon the rebound. Gonzaga with the ball in a tie game. The timeout. He wants to expedite the return of Batiste and Morrison. Boy, Michigan State really settling for jump shots. Uh, they're much better when they get a touch high, dump it low, reverse the ball. Not typical of a Tom Izzo offense against his own, Sean. Michigan State 26 and 7 last year. The great run at the end of the year that Salvage would might have been considered a disappointing season for a lot of the year for the Spartans. They went to the Final Four, lost four key players, yet the expectations are perhaps higher this year. Is that realistic given Anderson, Torbert Hill, Bagracus all gone? I think it's realistic. Uh, they're a different team. They don't have as much versatility on mm -hmm. defense. Guys like Alan Anderson and Kelvin Torbert could guard absolutely anybody. I don't care whether they play inside or outside. They don't have that, and they don't have a four-man they can really rely upon game in, game out. And I think Neitzel's going to have to have a really solid year. I mean, he's got the capabilities. I think we'll play more confidently. It looks like they've got a better communication between the point guard and the coach, too. I think Tom was really tougher on him as a freshman last year. Arizona Connecticut coming up next. Now Lute Olson enjoying a terrific game between Gonzaga and Michigan State. Gonzaga 26 and 5 last year. They won the West Coast Conference again. Lost in the NCAA Tournament second round to Texas Tech in a tight ball game. Uh, that's interesting, Jay, because all game I thought the referees have done a real nice job on the post defense. That time Davis got hung up. Maybe one of those just let it slide. 2 fouls on Paul Davis, nine team fouls. So Batista at the line, shooting the last one and one of this game. It'll be two for Gonzaga here after. He had 21 against Maryland, 9 of 10 from the free throw line. Shot 80% from the line last year. That's a real weapon for him because he's going to get fouled. He goes so hard to the what? basket. There's so much contact created. He can make a living at that line in college. I thought Michigan State's done a great job defensively on him, though. He hasn't really been able to duck in and use that big wide body. Two-point lead for Gonzaga. Mallon comes back in. Batista with the four fouls back on the bench. Michigan State staying in the game at the free throw line from the floor. They're four for 19 this half, but they're perfect 15 of 15 from the free throw line. Oh, 
Ager for three and the lead for Michigan State. You know the difference, they ran their offense, and as you said earlier, he stepped into it. When they the quick pass and jack, they have their problems. Well, when you move that defense from side to side, they've got to recover to you, and that's exactly what Michigan State did there. Heitfeldt, now Morrison. Tough runner, not tough for him. He makes it look easy. Gonzaga by one. 25 for Adam Morrison for the second straight game. Ager, a quick three. Sutton saved it. Threw it off Mallon. It'll go back to the Spartans. After the media timeout. 3.43 to go. Back and forth they go. Ager gave Michigan State the lead briefly, but now it's the Zags again by one. 3.43 to go here at the EA Sports Maui Invitational. Maurice Ager returned with 13-11 remaining with four fouls. He's played nearly 10 minutes without fouling out. One point lead for Gonzaga. It'll be Michigan State's ball. Knights will play it in. They have four in a line across the free throw line. And Sean, I would imagine this is going to go inside after the timeout, at least a touch, not a quick jack. And Tom Izzo oh. likes to throw the occasional lob after a timeout, so you've got to be aware of that. So much for that. Rossi. Right. Maurice Ager with a bomb, an Ager bomb, as the student section calls them from time to time at Michigan State. Good to see him have a solid game, too. Even with the foul problems, shooting confidently. Ager, a terrific young man, very religious young man. As a matter of fact, Tom Izzo has adjusted the practice schedule. They don't practice on Sunday mornings to allow Maurice to attend services. Morris at a deep three for the lead for Gonzaga. 28 for Morrison. Three out of six from beyond the arc from a career 31% three-point shooter. I'd say he's improved his range, huh? Into Davis with Batista and four fouls guarding him. Nice shot by Paul Davis. Michigan State by one. 20 points for Davis. And a timeout called by Mark Few. With his team down by one, he has two timeouts left. Maurice Ager on the ball reversal again, stepping into that shot, and he has shown he's got really deep range. How about How this? deep is that? That's incredible. His heels were out of bounds initially, and this is what we thought after the timeout. They go in deep, and a good job using his footsteps properly in the knockdown by Paul Davis. As a big guy, you really want your guards to come down. Nobody was home to scrape down on Davis either. Morrison's career high is 30 points. He has 28 in this one. AP preseason All-American, the first preseason All-American in Gonzaga history. First, they had a great player in Roni Turioff last year, second round pick of the Los Angeles Lakers, and we're happy to report he's here after open heart surgery in late July. There he is. He's been working out with the Zags, easing his way back into activity. And when Jay and I spoke with him before the game, he said he's hopeful that it won't be very long from now. He'll be eyeing a return, hopefully, with the Los Angeles Lakers. He was telling me he's the best cheerleader the Zags have right now as a silly foul, Nickel Dimer. Down in the corner on the cut by Walton. Two on Walton. Double bonus each way the rest of the way. 2.17 to go. I wonder who was going to blink at the free throw line here in the second half. Both teams are perfect. A combined 25 for 25. And Zaga 10 for 10 this half. And still perfect as Morrison made the first. Tom looking over, he can't believe the foul call. <laughs> he's getting a sunstroke. It's automatic. 
And Zaga by one. Adam Morrison has matched his career high with 30 points. This is semifinal action at the EA Sports Maui Invitational. 22nd year of this event. The best field ever in these two teams living up to their rankings. It's been back and forth here in the second half. John McDonough, Jay Billis, and Bill Raftery. Gonzaga with the ball. Up by one, just under two minutes to go. Getting into a little set with Morrison coming out the UCLA cut. He's going to post Walton. He's got the size advantage, and Walton fought him off. A nice try. Not a good entry pass. Went to the wrong hand. Walton, a tremendous defender. The Gonzaga fans thought he committed a foul while denying that pass. Tom Izzo irate with Neitzel. Called a timeout. Neitzel didn't get them into whatever it was. Izzo wanted him to get them into. That's where the pass should have come to that side. A better angle should have stepped down. Yeah, take a dribble baseline. Dribble down to the yep. baseline. You have that angle in. But Travis Walton really did a nice job of fighting through it. Mark Few calling that set to put the ball in Morrison's hands. A little UCLA cut. That was really solid. I may be. It's been enshrined in the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in beautiful Springfield, Massachusetts. Twenty-two now to shoot. Sutan plays it into Neitzel. Michigan State down by one. A minute and a half to go. A big thing will be offensive rebounding with the wing people maybe ending up with a jumper. Neitzel, that's a two, and the lead again for Michigan State. Coming down to who's going to get a big stop. A defensive rebound is now huge. Timeout, Gonzaga. Ten points for Drew Neitzel, a season high for the sophomore point guard for the Spartans. You know, Jay, I think he wanted Neitzel to split the defenders when they went to the timeout. This is what happened when they came back in. They ran the wings down and through. This kid has some ability, I think. That stroke is beautiful. He's making better decisions early on so far this year. And he's healthy now. Drew Neitzel. I mean, he had a pretty good year as a freshman getting yeah. all the way to the Final Four, but he's a much better player a year later. Well, he admitted last year all he wanted to do was run the offense, be deferential to other players. This year, he'll be looked upon for more scoring, cramping problems again, apparently, for Shannon Brown. And you know they've done as much as they can the last few days to avoid this after the tremendous cramping problems that he had Saturday in their loss at Hawaii. One timeout left for Gonzaga. They break the huddle with Pargo, Ribio, Batista, Morrison, and Mallon. Shannon Brown had 16 points in the first half, none here in the second. Tom Izzo can't believe that he's without one of his best players due to the cramps with 108 to go. Yeah, that is a tough break, and that limits them offensively and leaves them with one fewer athlete on the defensive end, and that means Ager with four fouls has got to guard Adam Morrison. You think that's where Gonzaga will go. Morrison with the ball. Rybeal guarded by Neitzel. One minute to go in a terrific game here at the EA Sports Maui Invitational. The winner will play for the championship tomorrow night. Batista, the little soft jump hook over Sutan. Gonzaga by one. And what patience by Morrison, Sean. Did the right thing. Nice catchable bounce pass. Need the little kiss by the big fella. A really nice two-man game coming off that screen and then Batista really posting up hard. One timeout left for each team now with 43.6 to go. He just gets that shoulder into your chest and locks you down. Sutan really not able to put up that much resistance and Batista just so strong. His body takes the legs away of the opponent almost, the impact. But I just thought the patience and intelligence of Morrison prevailed there. Didn't force it, didn't try and do anything silly. Both teams with one timeout in the double bonus. With 14 lead changes in this half. The high level basketball game, two well-drilled teams, and right now, 
It looks like Gonzaga could be going man. That's advantage Michigan State on this. They just don't want to give up a wide open shot. Shannon Brown apparently has recovered sufficiently from the cramps. He's on the court. One for a back cut. And this little slip to the goal for Davis. There's Ager for three. Oh, Sabakins! Big time delivery. And Gonzaga uses its last timeout, Mark Few. And the Gonzaga Bulldogs down by two. With 25 seconds to go. Who gets the ball last? This is terrific at this early stage of the season. Boy, and Maurice Ager coming off that screen, curling off, and Morrison flying at him. I think Ager shoots so much better when he's on the move, stepping into it against the zone when he's had standstill shots, he finished short. But how about 13 minutes to go, Ager had four fouls. He's still in the game and knocks down arguably the biggest shot of the game. The biggest shot, and also, Jay, the defense is coming at his hand, the shooting hand. That's very distracting, usually disturbs people. Great concentration. And Tom is a rewarded for the confidence that he showed in Maurice Ager putting him in the game. Adam Morrison right now, the primary option for Mark Few. He has been brilliant all game long. Tom Izzo can go with either Shannon Brown, who's guarded him a lot of the second half, or Maurice Hager, who guarded him in the first half, but got in foul trouble. And there are all kinds of options and all kinds of different sets that they can run for him. You know, you know what's interesting? When they screen him, it has created problems for Michigan State because they hand had job, and he's had that ability to hit the slip pass to the guy, the screener. Uh, so there's so many things he provides, not as a decoy, but as the primary guy. That happens because of his talent level. I would expect they'd go back to Morrison. See if Ager guides him again. 30 points to match the career high on 50% shooting. He's gone over the 1,000 career point mark tonight. Came in needing 19 to reach 1,000. He's the 28th player in the history of Gonzaga basketball to reach 1,000. Tom Izzo very upset that Maurice Zager wasn't on the preseason All-Big Ten team. It says a lot about the quality of players in that conference when he's not one of the top five players. Here's Morrison, it is Eager on it. Under 20 seconds to go. Rivio for the oh! lead! Again, it's again! Double up! Gonzaga by one. And Izzo will use his last timeout. Well, the players responding, fellas, but I think we've seen why these two coaches have won as they have, why they're regarded as they are, because on each possession, it seems they run something that's just perfect to get the right shot from the right man in the right place at the right time. Well, they can get you a shot, but I'll tell you what, it takes a lot to knock it down. And Rivio, this kid's a gamer with Neitzel flying at him to knock that shot down. That's big time. And a nice screen to set it up. And then, Sean, you're right. I mean, these guys put them in position to knock shots like that down. Rivio. The son of a terrific player. His dad played at the University of Portland and for the Lakers. Rick, 18 points for Rivio. He's had at least that many in every game. Had 24 yesterday against Maryland and 19 in their opener against Idaho. Junior from Vancouver, Washington with just the latest big shot. So now, what does Michigan State do down by one? 11 seconds to go. Uh, they, they done a great job when it gets inside reversing the ball. I think a touch has to occur in there. I think the big thing is how the wings free themselves. They're going to get some bumps for both Brown and Ager and then the decision by them if they're played tough on the deck or dump it low to Davis. If they come if Gonzaga comes out man Michigan State has a lot of different options they can run. They've got one four sets. They've got one three one sets. I think you've got to watch not only for the primary option, but also for the slip guy as well. When you're worried about the guy coming off the screen, sometimes it's the screener that can be open. 
Eager has been Tom Izzo's main man down the stretch here. He has 15 points in this half. Neitzel drives baseline, oh, steps on the baseline. And now they have to foul, and both teams have been perfect from the line in this half. They'll go for the quick steal, undoubtedly, and then they must foul. And, and you know what's interesting? Rivio almost called the timeout. Mark Few, no, no, no. None left for either team. And nobody on the ball. They're trying to get a steal on the inbounds, and if not, foul right away. And Maurice Joseph coming in for that purpose, getting Ager out so he doesn't pick up his fifth. Joseph, a freshman guard from Montreal. They won't guard Mallon to throw it in. No timeouts for Gonzaga if he has trouble getting it in. Rivio ran to the ball. He's one of the best free throw shooters in the country, and they foul him. Joseph with 7.1 to go. He missed the foul, so Rivio will shoot two. Last year, he made 90.3% of his free throws. He was sixth in the entire country. At one point, he made a school record tying 41 in a row. There's Neitzel on the end line, right in front of Donnie Gray. And they had lifted everybody, and he was going to kick this pack. And easy call for the official as well. You got to know where you are on the floor. First free throw attempts of the game upcoming for Derek Rivio. And Mark Few has moved all of his players out of the lane. And even if he makes both of them, it's still a one possession game. Sure it is. You'd have to bet on him making both. Both teams still perfect from the line in this half. A combined 28 for 28. The Zags are 13 of 13. Ager back in. And Sean, the big thing now is speed dribble, go as hard as you can to the goal, and then the kick back for the three. Yeah, it raises if he the makes question it, if, if you're the defense, do you foul? Boy, you got to wait till it gets to the front court if you do. And they haven't had a timeout to talk about it, so I wouldn't expect them to foul. Ager, three and a half seconds to go. He rises. Oh! And scores! Oh! Ager the with buzzer. the bomb at the buzzer, and we're heading for overtime. Ager's. How about that finish? Officials are over reviewing this play. And there's no question that was a three. It was way beyond the arc. I wonder if they're wondering about time remaining on the clock. That's what they're doing. Yeah, a couple of tenths maybe. What a great shot. And yeah. your point about fouling, Sean, is exactly right. If they could have fouled would they right about yeah. here, maybe four or three, but you know, it's an awfully difficult proposition. And especially since Gonzaga did not have any timeouts left, they couldn't talk about it in a timeout to get everybody on the same page. It's also got to be your philosophy totally. I mean, a lot of guys feel hit the foul, they might make the first three throw, miss the second, get an offensive rebound. And it's got to be within your system and discussed. And what a big time delivery. I'll, I'll tell you what, do you think Tom Izzo is glad that he put Maurice Ager back in with 13 minutes That's to go smart. and four fouls? I mean, I mean, you know, it was a gamble. But it paid off big because Maurice Hager, nobody's hit bigger shots in this game than he's hit. Well, he had Sean alluded to it. You know, you've got to trust your players to use good judgment down the stretch to stay on the floor. Well, Tom Izzo talks about how talented Maurice Hager is, says he might be as talented as anybody they've had at that position. And he's made a believer out of me tonight yeah. to back yeah. up that statement. Each team will get a timeout in overtime. Can you remember a game where guys right in a row have stepped up and oh. hit big shot after big shot after big shot? Unabashed. Absolutely oh. not. What a game. Yeah. Back and forth. Ties and lead changes and right off the tip, Morrison commits a foul as he knocked down Paul Davis. And that's just the first foul of the ball game against Adam Morrison, the junior from Spokane. And the free throw shooting continues to be flawless. 
on each side. 20 points for the game for Davis, eight for eight from the line. They didn't miss a free throw in the second half. The Spartans and they're 19 of 21 for the game. Gonzaga is 15 out of 16 for the game. Well, it's not only the shooting, it's the play after play they've come up with the, the right call to the right guy. In clutch situations, and you know, Sean asked the question before, which team is gonna blink? Nobody's blinking, and we can't take our eyes off the action. Hard goal with Rivio, Mallon, Batista, and Morrison. The five some to open overtime for the Zags and a hold against Namick as he had a piece of Batista and Drew Namick is fouled out. The junior from Muskegon, Michigan, all time block shot leader in the history of Michigan high school basketball. He blocked 527 shots for North Muskegon High School. That's one of those records that may never be broken. And Baptista, one of those guys that initiates contact as well and really puts pressure on the officials as well as the opponent. So here's Batista to shoot two. He's six out of six from the line. This has been a clinic. It sure has. I mean, flawless play, big play after play. Batista from Brazil, spent a year at Western Nebraska Community College, then transferred to Barton County Community College in Kansas. Went on to Gonzaga last year, and Mark Pugh said he was amazing. He was a surprise of the year, the newcomer of the year in the West Coast Conference, and a big reason why Gonzaga won that conference. Yet again. They've won five straight West Coast Conference regular season titles. Six of the last seven conference tournament championships. He'll play anybody and he has and done it successfully. Two three, Zags. Two, three zone again for Gonzaga. They've been able to get into cracks and get the looks. Sutan has given them some nice minutes. Neitzel for Davis, Sutan, Ager, and Brown. The rest of the five from for Michigan State, and it's Shannon Brown. Looks like he got hit. Well, Jay mentioned clinic. How about the ball reversible at Davis? And then you step in and knock it down. First point since the first half for Shannon Brown. Plagued in the second half by cramping difficulties. A three-point lead for the Spartans. Morrison, the answer! Oh, he didn't have any space at all for the release. Well, these teams needed a game or two to get warmed up this season, but this has been the kind of matchup you'd expect to see in a regional final or even in the final four, and the caliber of play has been up to that level as well. Scintillating. 33 for Morrison, Brown for three. Iwin Eger over Morrison, but he couldn't control it. Here's a chance for the Zags for the lead in overtime. He's much better at Morrison working off the ball where he can rub his man off screens and step into it. And he knows he can elevate over the defender because of the size differential. Like here. Morrison over Shannon Brown and long rebound and Neitzel. Eager. Oh! Davis! What a pass! What a run by the big guy! Good look! And the athleticism by Davis to run the floor, catch it, and finish at 6-11. As a 10-year-old, he was the Michigan State champion in the NFL. Punt, pass, and kick competition. He's a very good athlete, a low 80s golfer. And he's really blossoming as a basketball player, too. Right here, wow. the Spartan followers thought he walked. The officials did not concur. 22 for Derek. Eager. Bumped on a little brush by Pendergraft, who picks up his fourth. 
But his foul per minute pace has slowed dramatically after he had three fouls in the first three minutes. Boy, what a great job by Davis of running for him. That pass was absolutely spectacular. Off the dribble, too, which is tough. A lot of guys can't make that play. I think Judd's, he doesn't care who wins. He just wants to keep it going. I mean, if you love basketball, this, this is a dream. And for Judd, it's hard to cheer for one team or the other, but he knows he's taught a lot to both coaches. And he must be so proud to see the quality of the coaching we've seen and how much he has generously offered his counsel to these two men over the years. Is he taking notes there, Sean? I thought he was looking down to write something. Knowing Judd, though, he may not remember the first part of the game. It's so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Ager makes the free throws. Michigan State by two. 2.20 to go in overtime. Davis fouled Batista. Batista just stayed so wide that Davis couldn't really break contact to get around in front and discourage that pass. You're going to have to do it with ball pressure as well. Keep that ball out of there. And Zag has made its last 16 free throws. Michigan State's made its last 19. They've made 35 in a row combined. And the pressure falls on Batista. Try to make two and tie the game again. They're a magnet. No, it's just amazing. Hooks. Well, the improvement of team. Uh, the Zags played great, I thought, yesterday. But Michigan State just keep stepping up. All well, these teams have waited all day to play. Connecticut and Arizona, they're anxious to go, but they have to appreciate what they are watching here. Tied at 89. 2 10 remaining in overtime. Eager for three, short. Morrison runs it down in the corner. We wondered about the effect of fatigue. Warm again in the building. Third game in four days for Michigan State. Third in five days for Gonzaga. No signs of fatigue here in overtime. The play continues to be at an extraordinarily high level. I think the game's given them a lot of juice, Sean. Oh, well, adrenaline. They wave off the goal for Rivio, but he'll go to the line to shoot two more. You mentioned moments ago, 90% from the line last year. Neitzel fouled him. Two on Drew. Now this is starting the year early for coaches too. I mean, the decision making and the calls and defensive maneuvers and the role, substituting, getting screeners in. Both coaches came here to Maui. We spoke with Mark Pugh and Tom Izzo over the weekend with questions and concerns about their team, wondering if they were as good as they thought and expected to be. I think they're starting to have some of their fears relieved with these performances here in the EA Sports Maui Invitational. Rabio has 24. Derek Rabio, the junior from Vancouver, Washington, has given Gonzaga two-point lead, a minute and a half to go in overtime. Davis out of control, charge. And the hey, Michigan State coaches are saying, wait a minute, what about that arc? They're using the arc in these in-season early tournaments underneath the basket. If you're in there, it's not supposed to be a charge. He was standing right under the basket. I mean, that was yeah. my first question is whether that applies, whether when you're coming from the baseline. Yeah. You know, no the refs question. aren't used to that either. Yeah, think about that. And he was right in the middle of the arc. Tom Izzo, Jim Boylan. Had a legitimate beef. It was Boylan who noticed it. And of course, he's a 13 year NBA assistant who has just returned to Michigan State this year. He's used to that arm. Batista. Pendergraf missed a put back. Then Batista stripped and Ager controls. Under a minute to go. Michigan State with a chance to tie or take the lead again. Rizzo calling a set for his team to run against this 2-3 zone. 
Eager into the lane. Tough oh. runner, and he made it. Oh. Well, the end of the year, he'll be Big Ten on the Big Ten yeah. <laughs> All team. That's what it counts. What a penetration and delivery. And Mark Fuel used his one timeout granted in overtime. Leading them back at the second half, and he's carried it right into the overtime. 28 points, 22 in the second half. Yeah, what, more can overtime. Ask, what more can you ask about? He has been extraordinary. I mean, some guys don't have that kind of performance in a career, let alone in one game. You know, you brought up the point in the commercial. You can draw a charge under the rim. If I'm in the post position and I start backing you in and knock you over, it doesn't count. That way, that can be, you know, considered the right call. But that play was a little bit different. Hager returned at 13-11 remaining in the second half with four fouls. And has played unencumbered by the foul trouble. He's been brilliant. Here's Gonzaga with a three-second difference on the shot clock. They can run it almost all the way down to the end if they so choose. Very few possessions for the Zags in particular in this game where the shot clock has been an issue. It hasn't really been much of a factor for Michigan State either on offense. We got the two point guards in there, Sean, plus the point forward, Morrison. Morrison with Ager who slaps the floor to guard Morrison with the four fouls. Morrison, a tough pull up. Pendergraft at the buzzer, no. And the game's the still going on. Back up. They stopped Everybody the game clock, I believe, for a second. The shot clock went off. That's amazing. Everybody stopped when the shot clock buzzer went off. And boy, that could have been an unbelievable result. That was the buzzer for the shot clock, not the game clock, and the officials are going to have to sort it out. We showed you there was approximately a three second difference. Let's look and listen. It hit the rim. It, it hit, the, hit rim. the rim. That was a reset, and everybody stopped. Well, if Batista's shot went in, that would have been ball game, game been, over when yeah, everybody right. stopped exactly. because of the shot clock horn, thinking it was the game horn that would have ended the overtime period. Ernie My Banks. goodness, that Ernie. would have been game over on a tremendously bizarre play had Batista just dropped that in the bucket. And you wonder if he half-heartedly flipped it up there thinking it's it after the buzzer, this isn't going to count anyway. I think you're exactly right. Another shot of it, Sean. Reset. Yep. There's three seconds after that. That's amazing. If he shot the ball, the game would have been over. That's utterly incredible. That's why they tell you to play through yeah. the buzzer. You don't worry about buzzers. You let the refs tell you to stop yep. playing. Mike Kitts, the late official, just walked over and said, do you guys understand what just happened? Everybody heard that buzzer thinking the game was over. He said, if that shot went in, that would have counted and the game would have been over. But the problem is there shouldn't have been any buzzer. That should have been reset by the clock official. Well, I think it was so close to the actual expiration of the shot clock. Very meant to reset it, but that shot struck the rim at just about zero. It left the hand at one, but he has to make sure it hits the rim. That's true. I don't and think then, you can fault the shot right. clock yeah, operator true. there. That's it true. automatically goes off, too, if mm -hmm. he the, uh, hits the zero. Let's play two, Ernie. Well, selfishly, I'm glad to see them keep going. And oh. it certainly would have been... Uh, Really a unsatisfying ending to the game if it had ended on a shot after just about everybody in the court had stopped thinking the buzzer sounded in the overtime. But in fact, it was the shot clock buzzer with a couple of seconds still to play in overtime. Overtime number two, and Davis won the tip to Sutan. They open the segment with Neitzel, Ager, and Brown. 2 3 zone. For Gonzaga. A little box set, the screen in the corner. Jaeger's three missed, but it's tipped in by Goran Sutan. And that's where the zone can hurt you, rebounding responsibilities. But I'm watching Brown, too. He's wincing uh, on the other end, on the offensive end. 
All his leg issues, cramps. But he doesn't quit. No. Pendergraf to Pargo with Rivio, Batista, and Morrison for Gonzaga. Got a little flex now. Morrison, the runner. He just makes things happen with his understanding of offense. He's always moving, and that is so hard to guard. But he's not alone. His teammates are moving and screening as well. Morrison is 35. One minute gone by in the second overtime. Eager. Into the lane for the dipsy do. He's had two penetrations that have been extraordinary instead of settling for the jumper. Eager has 30. And grab is not really a scorer. Morrison is. They all go after it up on the rim. Davis dives to the floor to save it for Michigan State. What a great effort. Nice little yeah. walk. Head by two scores here might win the game. The way this is going, they're each scoring on just about every possession. Just an amazing effort here, Jay. I mean, Got a jersey uh, grabbed and everything. gets pushed and still makes the play. That's big time. Yeah. Four games in five days, and now a couple of overtimes, maybe more for Michigan State, but they are fighting for the last minute. Pendergraft a little bit long with the shot, saved by Batista. Pendergraft has not scored in the game. Pargo, how about that oh, move to the part, rim? Part the sees what confidence he possesses. This game's gonna be won by the team that makes a stop. Guys are really going to the dribble drive now. Knights old four, three, long rebound to Davis. 13 rebounds for Paul Davis. New shot clock and Izzo shouts the instructions for Knights old and they'll use a timeout. Last double overtime game here at the EA Sports Maui Invitational was in 1992. The seventh place game, Chaminade beat Stanford 71-63 in double overtime. Uh, not quite the same marquee matchup, not the same hype, not the same level of play that we've seen in this one. It, it's been absolutely extraordinary. The plays by Shannon Brown and Maurice Sager and Paul Davis, and then on the other end, Morrison and Rivio. It, it's been mm -hmm. really an extraordinary basketball game. I'm amazed at the response of both teams, second game, both third in uh, Michigan State's case, but their understanding of how to put people away, being creative with the dribble when the jump shot isn't going. It, it's just been a pleasure. Now, will the coaches be distressed about defense? I mean, you have to give credit for these great offensive players making plays, but is it in any way a product of shaky defense? At times, there are going to be instances where the defense could have and should have been better, but, I mean, you have to give a tremendous amount of credit, and you are, to, to the great offense that we've seen. Uh, for Michigan State, it's been all about Maurice Ager. Saddled with foul trouble most of the game, but with 13 minutes, left in the ball game Tom Izzo went back to him and he really delivered Bill and he, it's been feast week for him or at least feast day and shots contested he's been able to knock down and you know all of a sudden the main stays look at those numbers huh both are career highs Ager's career high was 24 last accomplished in the final four lost to North Carolina 24 of those in the second half in overtime for Maurice, the senior from Detroit, a Crockett High School, the first recruit as head coach for Tom Izzo out of Detroit's public school league. And Ager will inbound, 26 on the shot clock. Tie game at 95 in the second overtime. With just 2.18 remaining. Ager will inbound from the other side in front of his bench with Davis, Brown, Neitzel, and Sutton. Gonzaga sticking with that 2-3 zone. Brown drives right by Pendergraft, short with the shot. Pendergraft ripped it away from Brown. He is a tough kid. He's got offensive rebound at the other end. Really competes. And he's played in these important minutes. The sophomore, David Pendergraft, who last year averaged just under three points and two and a half rebounds a game. Morrison 
so active. Look at this look. Oh, what a great feed. He saw that before he caught it, Jay. Morrison to Batista, 22 for Batista. He's had 20 plus in all three of their games this year. Gonzaga by two, 136 to go in the second overtime. Eager, too strong, Batista the rebound. That side pick and roll the pin down. Suton the hit ahead the night zone. And with a minute to go in the second overtime, Michigan State has tied it up at 97, 12 points for Neitzel. And Rabio just couldn't get the ball out far enough on the dribble. Great deflection. Morrison, a deep three. You wonder about that shot selection. He's demonstrated he can make it, but was that the best option now? Held ball, Gonzaga gets it back. You know, probably not, Sean, but when you're that talented, this is just a terrific deflection, Jay. And a nice play by Brown just to ward off the impending defense. Well, Ravio, as good a ball handler as he is, Neitzel just went behind and knocked that thing away and went the other way with it. And Again, the team that's going to win this game is the team that makes the big defensive stop. Rivio will hold the ball. 3.8 seconds difference between the game clock and the shot clock. I think this time they'll be alert to the yeah, <laughs> shot clock buzzer if it happens again. I think they're going to start with about 15 to 13 seconds just so you get some motion. And they give yourself an opportunity yeah. for an offensive Tip, rebound as well. Oh, they got the timeout. The 10 seconds on the shot clock. That's what Mark Few wanted. IRS problems. Associated tech. Still have 10 seconds to run a play, take the lead, and perhaps win it if they could score here. They got into overtime with Maurice Ager. Hit a three at the buzzer. At the end of regulation. Ager's been sensational. Morrison has been his equal for Gonzaga. A delectable feast tonight here in Maui and still another ball game to come. Arizona and Connecticut. And you think now, guys, those coaches have a job on their hands. It's tough when you've been waiting all day to come play, then you come here and sit around and get a little bit stale and stiff waiting to go. Well, it can happen, but they've got 20 minutes to get ready. I think in the end of this game, Gonzaga now can afford to take this all the way down to the end of that shot clock because of the 3.8 second differential and still have an offensive rebound opportunity. And here's the uh, controversial play. Players stop, shot clock buzzer went off. Baptista could have laid it up and won the game. Not a real understanding, just play through it, and they didn't. Well, plus that, that shot clock is awfully loud. I mean, that is a really loud shot like clock. Like the horn yeah. almost. How nip and tuck has this game been? The last time either team led by more than three points was with 9.08 remaining in the second half when Gonzaga led 59-55. There have been 15 ties in the game, 21 lead changes. Five. On the shot clock, Rivio a deep three, short, rebound Brown, they have some time, three seconds to go, he watches, it will not count even if it goes in, he traveled and we head for a third overtime. Wow. Now Mark Few wants them to go to the monitor and see if they should put time back on the clock. You know, Sean, that was not a good trip by Gonzaga. You know, the timeout late, they got back on the floor, they end up settling for a real deep jump shot, less than five, you know. Get into it a little quicker would have been more effective and impact. A good call here is the slippage occurred just over half court. And they might have a bite, look like it could have as much as a second remaining. If that's, if they want to go by 
when the infraction occurred rather than the whistle. They yeah, slipped on that logo. It looked like about 1.2. Of course, it takes a second, not a second, but it takes some measure of time to blow the whistle, react to what you see. The slip came at 1.2. There's a, there's a part of you that just says, let's go to the third overtime. Yeah. Let's not do this. But there is a chance to catch it and shoot it at point Yeah, no, there's, or, there's more know? than a chance. Yeah. We'll get it just over half court. That'll be the nearest inbounding position how about Mike these Stewart and Mike Kitts two of the three officials let's listen for the whistle and watch the clock at the same time well there was time left I would say about 0.6 when we heard the whistle but I didn't see any of the officials over there with a headset on, so I'm not sure they could have heard what we just heard. And the gesture Mike Kitts just made would lead me to believe we're heading for the third overtime right now. We're going to say lag time. Hey, I need the second. What's that? I would want the oh, second. Oh, if you're Mark Fury, yeah, you want the Mark second. Fury, if you're, yeah. if you're Tom Izzo, you want to go to the third yeah. overtime. Now he's going to put a headset on. We'll lay out. Now, Mike Kitts just watched and heard what you heard. What would you guys say? 0 0.6, 0 0.7? I think they'll go less than that. Just a guess. Point, you know, because the lag time, etc. 1-2, 1-3. We got to give him something. They're, they're saying you tell him. I'm not going in there. Well, there's five minutes up on the scoreboard clock, so. Mike Kitts going into the Gonzaga huddle. Donnie Gray telling Tom Izzo what transpired. And based on the look on Izzo's face, I think they are going to put time back on the second overtime clock. Mike Kitts just came over. He watched what we watched. He's going to put nine tenths of a second back on. And that seems about right. The travel looked like it came at 1.2 seconds. It does take that fraction of time. I think it'd be hard to argue that. Yeah. There certainly should have been some time put back on, and 0.9 is about as good as anybody's guess. Uh, you can do a few things here. Back screen lob. Well, you can screen. Fake the lob, step to the ball, turn and shoot it. Okay. You can also get something coming off a screen to get it more in front of Gonzaga's bench, whether it's deep down in the corner. Or... Now these coaches have had all this time in the timeout. You wonder if they were preparing for an end of game split second situation like this or if they were getting their troops ready for what they thought would be a third overtime. My guess is Mark Few was getting his team prepared that they were going to have a last shot. I'll tell you what, what's interesting, it's an old time play, throw it off the glass. If you don't keep it in bounds though, they get the ball back. Right. Everybody stops, you get the ball off the glass. Of course from there, it's a tough angle well, with the guy being guarded. And, and plus, Edong Ebok is guarding Pendergraft out of bounds. He's got a, a wingspan of about seven foot six inches. And yeah, nine foot three wing uh, reach and seven foot five wingspan on Ebok, who stands 6'11". Redshirt freshman of the game for the first time. They throw it deep, Davis steals, and we're heading for a third overtime. Well, catch your breath, get your favorite beverage, and come on back to Maui. Welcome back to Maui in the first three overtime game in the 22-year history of the Maui Invitational, and in its fifth year sponsored by EA Sports. Need a respirator. Mike Are you Kitts, tired, the Mike? official over here, telling us that he could break <laughs> if you get our drift. <laughs> no time for the officials to run off the court and get a momentary break. What did you say, four games in five days for Michigan State? Yeah, boy, it would be interesting to see the effect this has on either team that makes it to the championship game tomorrow. You know, Arizona and Connecticut are 
waiting and undoubtedly antsy, but this could really help whoever wins that game tomorrow. We're told this would take on the winner of this one. Davis wins the tip again from Batista. And the third overtime is underway. Gonzaga needs to be active in this 2-3 zone. Show hands and get around some of these screens. Eager for three. They were all concentrating on Brown in the middle of the lane. And they didn't match up properly on the wing. Boy, doesn't he run? Tom Izzo run great sets against sure the zone. Action to one side, screening it, and then running the action back to the other side. It deludes you to thinking it's going one way. Hager is 33 points. Here's Pargo, the freshman, the Morrison. The bank. Unbelievable. In traffic, still the kiss. 37 for Morrison on 13 of 27 from the floor and 7 of 8 from the line. Knights will kill some time as Michigan State gets set. Ager, Brown, Sutton, and Davis. They've been the five that have played almost exclusively in the extra sessions. Ager long. Rivio nearly lost it to his own man, Cargo, and got it back. Now a chance for the lead for the Zags. Batista, he's played a very long time with the four fouls, like Jaeger. Morrison lost it, lost it off the foot, but it went to Rivio. They've been going to that pin down a lot. Batista pinning down the screen for Morrison, and Morrison looking into him. Batista gets great screens, too. Short. Cargo way short, but there's Pendergraft in his first bucket of the ball game. And it gives Gonzaga lead, both teams over the century mark, with three minutes remaining in overtime number three. Pendergraft should play in overalls, he just keeps working. Ager, an air ball, caught by Sutton, and then he was fouled. Both Batista and Davis were going after the rebound hard, and Pendergraft just slipped in behind. You can see he wasn't boxed out after he set that little screen, and Goran Sutan nowhere in the picture. Oh, my goodness. After 39 in a row made by these two teams combined since halftime, Sutan, the miss. Michigan State had made 19 in a row. Now Sutan with one more to tie. See if Gonzaga goes back to that same screen. Batista down for Morrison. Uh, a little four-round one with Batista inside. And the grab. Jack to three. Morrison the rebound. He was fouled by Travis Walton. So Morrison will go to the line. He's seven out of eight from the stripe. Now, both coaches run so many things, Jay. That was different. They hadn't run that open middle with Baptista working, and then Morrison's able and capable of rebounding. He's got such a size differential. They need somebody quick to guard him on the perimeter, and then he takes advantage of low. You think Mark Few drew up that play for Pendergraft to take a three from the corner? No, no, no. I meant <laughs> Baptista being in the lane. <laughs> three points away from the tournament record. Lowry did that in 1994, Loyola Marymount against Chaminade. Morrison, two to tie the record. That's the last thing on his mind right now. Uh, may have been Bill Greer or Leon Rice drew up the three for Pentagon. <laughs> I know it wasn't, wasn't Mark Few. Longest game for Gonzaga since 1978. They played four overtimes and a three-point win against Idaho State in February of 1978. They lead this one by two, two and a half to go. up man they go to the one four high davis down the lane bumped before the shot by heitfeld 
Those teams are so well equipped. They recognize situations, get right into the flow of their offense. Heitbelt hasn't played much lately. He's had four fouls and they've been prospering without him. But he picks up his fifth and fouls out. Michigan State last played a three overtime game in 1996, December 14th against Detroit. The three overtime loss, 86-84. Felt out of the game, and here's Davis at the free throw line. 10 for 10 from the stripe, 11 for 11. And if he can continue to be perfect from the line, he'll tie the game again. I'll tell you, I have utter admiration for these two teams. These kids have given everything that's been asked by the coaches. It's an extraordinary high level of play this early. You talk about leaving your heart on the floor. It's not just the effort, it's what you're saying, Bill, the high level of play, big play after big play. Tied at 103. Amazing free throw shooting. Four misses combined. With 53 attempts by these two teams. Hargo with Rivio, Pendergraf back in now. Batista and Morrison, 15 to shoot. Into Batista, assertive move to the bucket. It spins out over Sutton, who corrals the rebound. He's been tough, too. Really good job by Sutton to come and pick up Batista as he rolled off that screen. That was solid work. Timeout, 143 to go, and overtime number three, tied at 103 at the Lahaina Civic Center at the EA Sports Maui Invitational. One of the great games in the 22-year history of this event, the premier in-season early tournament, end of regulation, down by three. Maurice Ager tied it at 80 at the buzzer to force overtime, a bizarre end overtime. The game tied. The shot clock buzzer goes off. The players thought the overtime had ended. It had not, but Batista missed a short one. End of second overtime, tied again. Rivio missed a three. Brown a chance to win it for Michigan State. He slipped and traveled. They put .9 back on the clock, but Gonzaga did not score on the inbounding play. The pass was intercepted. The question becomes, how will overtime number three end? Still a ways to go to get to that point. 143 left, and Tom Izzo scheming his team with the ball out of a timeout in a 103-103 tie. Last time two teams, each over 100 points in a game in this tournament was 1991 when Chaminade beat Providence 111-108 in a first round game. Well, if you're Michigan State, well, they have hit some really big perimeter shots. You don't want to take a challenge jumper unless the ball has moved from side to side or gone inside out. This is the 17th time the game has been tied. There have been 22 lead changes. Well, good things happen when Davis touches it generally. That means they've run their offense, had some good looks, down to 10. And time to go toward the bucket for the Spartans. Brown guarded by Pendergraf. Three to shoot. Davis a screen. Brown for a three. Way off. Cargo the rebound. 115 to go. Ninth rank Gonzaga with the ball in a 103 tie. That, that's what I was talking about. Settling for a jump shot. That's mm -hmm. exactly what they did. One of the few times they took too long to get into it. They've been running on adrenaline, but you get the sense now the pace slowing. You wonder if mental oh. and physical fatigue is starting to take over. Not for Morrison. That's 41 in a single game. Maui tournament record. Nobody has scored as many points as Adam Morrison's 41 in this tournament. What a ticker. Great release. Taking advantage of size. Ager to Brown. Ager, a deep three! Oh, I oh my goodness. Is Michigan State the lead. Again, a very small difference between the game clock, which you see, and the shot clock, which is at 30, as Gonzaga calls the timeout. So 1.9 the difference. And will Gonzaga...
take it all the way down and try to win it on the last shot of the third overtime. And he knows how to take advantage of size, Jay. Great delivery. Is there any limit to the heroics of Morrison and Ager? Mm. Mm. What a thriller. Wow. Ager with 36, 12 more than his previous career high. He's had 30 since the half. He had three fouls at the half. He picked up his fourth early in the second half. Went out of the game, came back with 13-11, remaining in the second half, played the rest of regulation in all these overtimes without fouling out. Davis has 26 points and 13 rebounds for Michigan State. And a tournament record, 41 points for Adam Morrison in this EA Sports Maui Invitational semifinal. Longest game in tournament history. We haven't been here. You've been here for almost all of these builds. And this has been a classic. I this can't imagine the there's ever been a better game, more exciting game played at this high a level in the history of this tournament. Absolutely sensational. You know what I was thinking of in the timeout there with Morrison? Reminds me of Larry Bird. Coach is talking. Just give me the ball. I'll take care <laughs> of business. That's what he looks like. Boy, and Akers really stepped up to the challenge of guarding Morrison down the stretch here. Pendergraf. Little down screen. They're going to try to score quickly. They don't want to run the risk of waiting for the buzzer. And Morrison will go to the line. Michigan State should have a chance to get the ball back. You like that strategy? Don't let it come down to one shot. Go early. It's well, the game. I, I think you've got to do it so you have more opportunity. I just love the design of the play. They run a double, so they empty the backside. He's able to put it on the floor with his left hand. So creative and a great call from the bench. And that's it for Ager. And he gets a tremendous hand from both fan sections. Played 28 minutes with four fouls. And finally, fouls out That's with 36 a, uh, points. What a gutsy performance by Maurice Ager. Well, not that he's awakened a lot of eyes, but boy, if you didn't know about him before, you know about him now. Big time ticker. Morrison to the line. He has the only miss of the night from the free throw line for Gonzaga. They're 23 of 24. He's 9 out of 10. Now 10 out of 11. Tied at 106. This for the lead with 19 seconds left. The Zags have made 25 straight free throws. They lead by one. Timeout. Neither team has a timeout left. <laughs> I don't know if either team has much of anything left the way this one has gone. It's has been as thrilling as I've been witnessed. Um, I can't remember one, including NCAA Final Four games. Uh, uh, this is shot for shot, counter punch for counter punch. This could be the year you meet that perfect. Well, it's not that often that events, games, live up to the hype. This was by far the most anticipated of the 22 now EA Sports Maui Invitationals. Certainly the best field. You have six of the eight schools that have won national championships, two Hall of Fame coaches. I think this is better than anything we could have anticipated, particularly to have these teams playing this way at this time of the year. Yeah, it is so early. And to have this exciting of a game, Certainly you can have this exciting of a game from time to time, but played at this high a level with big play made after big play and the coaches diagramming plays and having them executed almost flawlessly. And right now they're gonna have to be flawless, Michigan State. Looks like straight up man to man by the Zags, a pin down. And no eager to rescue them this time. Will there be another hero for the Spartans? 10 seconds to go. Neitzel passed it up. Underneath, oh, Zutan missed the layup. And they're indicating held ball. Gonzaga gets it. Pendergraf had it. It looked like he was fouled. I didn't see much of a held ball. Sutan missed a wide open layup that would have given Michigan State the lead again. Sutan set the screen, and as often happens, he was the one that was wide open. 
but just barely missed the shot. Unfortunate. Now a little hold here on the inbounds pass. Walton, not a bad move when you think of it. You know, that questionable held ball call might have hurt Michigan State because if it had been a foul instead, there'd be slightly more time on the clock, but they also would have had Pendergraft shooting for Gonzaga instead of Rivio, one of the best free throw shooters in the country. Michigan State would have been better off if that was called a foul instead of a held ball. And just, uh, you know, one, one of those situations too, where you get a look like that, you're shocked. Sutan, uh, the dribble, drag people, he slips to the goal. Now, now, remember, at the end of regulation, if Rivio hits these two, it's still a one possession game. It's a three point game, and you've got to expect them to hit them. We asked the question, should Mark Few and Gonzaga foul? They did not have a timeout then. They've got a dead ball situation. You ask the question again, do you foul? Now, with Maurice Ager out of the game, one big three-point threat out. But if he knocks these two down, you are in the, the period where you might want to foul. I think he might. But also, don't forget, if they go to the free throw line, with Davis and Sutan, they seem to have more size. But this is a just a tough play as the dribble attracted all the white shirts. And he is just aghast at a blown opportunity, but he has played good, solid basketball. I think that happens frequently when you're all of a sudden wide open. You know, there's been a lengthy delay here, and I'm not quite sure what this is about. It's over how much time is left on the clock. Izzo asked yep. him to take a look at it. And they have put time back on. It was 4.4. They've moved it to 4.6. Arribio goes to the line. Gonzaga missed its first free throw of the game. Morrison missed one. They've made 25 in a row since. And here's Rivio, who once made 41 in a row from the line last season. He's five for five from the line tonight, has 25 points. And plenty of speed for Michigan State on the floor with the push hard dribble. Shannon Brown's the guy you gotta look for here. Shannon Brown, they need a three to tie and force a fourth overtime. Brown, he was not fouled. Izzo hopping mad about the lack of a call. He's all over Donnie Gray. And a most unsatisfying ending to a classic game for Tom Izzo and the Michigan State Spartans. Gonzaga prevails in three overtimes, 109 to 106. Shannon Brown taking it down the sideline, gets trapped. Uh, he jumped into the defender, Pargo. I understand why Tom Izzo's upset, but I think the referees would say he tried to create that contact. I think he just lost the ball. I think, I think it was a good knock call. And of course, he thinks he got him on the wrist. And we have very experienced officials. It was Donnie Gray right there. Who's worked in a lot of big games. These guys would not have been afraid to make that big call at this juncture if they thought it was a foul. It just looked like the ball was slipping out. I do too. As uh, Brown went up. What? Uh, Mark Few just coming over. What a classic. Nobody lost this game, Sean. No. Everybody gained. College basketball gained the most. Danny Ainge just walked over and shook hands with Mark Few in front of us. Well, that was played at a high level. It wouldn't surprise you, Bill, to see either one of these two teams Late in the final March, four. Right. Not the Maui final four, the big final four at the end of the year. Here's Jay Billis with Mark Few. Mark Few, first of all, congratulations. Have you ever been a part of a game that was played at that high of a level for that long a period of time? Not, not for that long, but it had eerily reminded me of the Arizona okay. game in the, uh, in the NCAA tournament. Two teams playing great. Making, I mean, how about all those in the game situations that both teams, those kids executed almost flawlessly. Well, speaking of end of game, at the end of regulation, when they had just under nine seconds to go, did you give any thought at all to fouling when you were up three? Okay, now you and I, I think, are on the same page here. I do not like to foul up three because I think you can lose the game. They can make one free throw, tip it out, and hit a three. We had one kid that just did not switch a screen. We were supposed to switch that last screen. If we would have switched it, I think we would have been okay, but you know what? He hit a heck of a shot. And so you tip your hat there, and I just have never, ever uh, fouled up three, so. 
How, how about? I want to apologize for keeping you and Sean out of that twilight round uh, tonight at uh, Plantation. That's I, 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 my sincerest apology. Well, we'll get over it. What, what a great. How about the performance of Morrison? Uh, he was amazing. I mean, uh, you know, the bigger the game, the better Adam is. And, and I, I think he really showed his versatility tonight against some, as you know, some hard nosed, tough uh, defenders. Nobody's as tough as Michigan State. But I tell you what, the big fella, JP, delivered tonight, too. Time and time again, I was trying to call his number as much as we could also. But you couldn't knock him off the box. Congratulations on a great game. Thanks, Jake. Let's get Adam Morrison in here. Hello. Adam, it looked like all game long you just wanted the basketball and to make a play. Yeah, you know, uh, that's why I've been working hard all summer, and that's why I came to Gonzaga is to have uh, tournaments like this, and I want the ball at the end, so that's what I wanted. Was it... A, a, did it, was it as much fun as it looked to play in that kind of game where big play after big play was being made? Yeah, it's just one of those. It was kind of reminding me of like a, a nice pickup game where everybody's just trying to go at each other back and forth, back and forth. Nobody could really get the lead. And, you know, I tip my hat to Michigan State. You know, they deserve to win as much as we did. You know, we just made a few free throws at the end and uh, came away. Well, Adam, congratulations on a great performance. Thank you. Sean, back to you. Well, Mark Few praising the players. On both sides, deservedly so. Both coaches should be proud, too. Oh, I mean, they, absolutely. they showed why they have the resumes, they have the track record they have. It was beautifully played, beautifully coached, and very well officiated. The last play was ruled a turnover in the judgment of the officials and official score. Brown never had control of the ball. Going up, they'll debate that for a while in East Lansing. Coming up next, college game night, followed by still more from Maui, Arizona, and Connecticut. That should be a dandy as well. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in